tomorrow, a new era and like one we have seen before begins. A new dawn of higher prices of fuel and of everything else. From hiked fuel prices to higher costs of goods, it's enough to make you sick. But hold on because you will have to pay more there as well. You see, no sooner had we began to come to terms with the new era of higher prices than we were hit with another proposal. You see, in order to get well, you will have to pay more. We talk about those proposed hikes on NHIF that are also coming for your pocket. But is the solution a tax boycott? How would that even happen? Also, I have a knock-knock joke for you tonight. Knock-knock. Who's there? Strangers in the house, state house to be precise. We'll be talking about these new individuals in just a moment on the show. Now, tonight, Sam Gituku has found out that the government can indeed be quite efficient when it wants to. Jamila has a memo for the government tonight on leadership, inspiring hope amongst the Kenyan youth entering the job market. Kaikai's kicker traces the journey towards normalization of corruption that has began in earnest. And on my take tonight, just how many audits are too many? The gang is here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show tonight. So this week we saw some interesting new faces in cabinet at State House. Jamila, <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> oh, I should no. I'll, I'll get to Gitukri. Okay, Gitukri, do you want to tell us who? There were some new visitors at State House. Um, and at cap in cabinet. Well. Maybe they have frequented State House on several occasions. Uh, as of cabinet, I'm not certain about that. I don't sit there. I would be a stranger to you. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, we saw that um, the Secretary General of UDA, Kilafas Malala, the National Advisor on, or rather, the Presidential Advisor on National Security, Monica Juma, as well as um, the Advisor on Women Affairs, that is Harriet Chigai, and Devin D, the Chairperson of the Economic Council of uh, uh, Advisors to the President, they will now be sitting in Cabinet, which is quite peculiar, knowing that um, it is coming in a time that is just about how many years? Less than two years mm -hmm. since Justice Anton Murima in September 2021 20, uh, ruled that um, you cannot do that, bearing in mind that a general body, remember him? Uh, the director mm -hmm. NMS. General yeah. at yeah. NMS, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Uh, he had been taken to court by a cabinet secretary. That time he was, she, she was the member of parliament for Kandara, that is Alice Ohome. And the grounds of um, her argument were that Article 152 of the Constitution talks about the people that sit in cabinet. That is the president, the deputy president, the attorney general, and cabinet secretaries who must be uh, at least 14 and a maximum of 22. If you count that, you get to a number of 25. But then again, there's also the secretary to the cabinet, um, an office established by Article 154 of the Constitution, currently occupied by Masi Wanjao. And of course, now the question before the judge was who is general body before uh, the cabinet? Because yes, he was not a cabinet secretary. He was not president. He was not deputy. Neither was he attorney general, but had been allowed to be sitting in cabinet meetings. And so the, the judge said, that as long as, and now the fact that General Badi had taken the oath of secrecy, he became a member of the cabinet. Mm. And this week on Tuesday, to be precise, the four that I just mentioned took the oath of secrecy to be attending cabinet meetings as was communicated uh, by a statement from State House. And therefore, I mean, this is, this is confusing because it was a judgment um, against the action of a president. Mm -hmm. There's a president, of course, in the country, William Ruto, he has cleared the four to sit in the cabinet as advisors, as a secretary general, and one wonders, yeah. do what? And, and, um, and, and there's the interesting yes. thing, Jamila, because um, you know, you've got advisors to cabinet or to the presidency, and you'll correct me you know, at the time um, what their designation was, whether they're advisors. I think, I believe some of them are advisors to the president, others are advisors to cabinet, we, we shall see. But what is most peculiar is what uh, you know, Sam Gituku talks about, where you have a party leader, um, you know, a political party leader who is now um, you know, party to cabinet proceedings and discussions where decisions are made. Um, is there a point at which we say, 
the president is the head of state, the commander in chief. He is the president of the nation. He hails from the UDA party. But is this a UDA government or is it led by somebody who is a party leader of a political party? And that's where um, things get a little interesting. But then there's also the others as well. Yeah. And history and context. And history and context. Before. Even because as Article, Article 152 of the Constitution of Kenya, as uh, Gituk was told, it states that the number of cabinet secretaries shall not be less than 14, no more than 22. Mm -hmm. And that the president shall nominate and appoint them with the approval of the National Assembly. And... Um, Swearing in the four, as uh, Gituk has told us was done on that day, does not really make them cabinet secretaries because the due process was not followed yeah. uh, to make them so. And then something else that was peculiar about this whole thing was that there was a statement uh, from State House that said that the president had allowed um, uh, Madam Chigai to attend the cabinet meetings. Uh, because of his agenda to put women's issues mm -hmm. at the center of the Kenya Kwanzaa government, but yeah. it did not really explain what the others were doing there. So this is Malala, Dr. Ndi, and, and Monica Juma, why they were allowed to attend the meeting. Mm. And then, of course, there's the issue of, um, those may say, well, didn't uh, Uhuru Kenyatta al allow Rafael Tuju um, at yeah. the time to sit in cabinet? He was a cabinet was a minister without portfolio. portfolio. And he was secretary general yeah. of, of Jubilee at the Absolutely, time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but if, if you look at, at, at how things were then, and I'm not saying may have been right or wrong, one of the, of the, of the stipulations, as we said in, uh, in, the, in the law, is that not less than 14, not more than 22, yeah. Rafael Tuju was among the 22 mm. that had been appointed by President Uhuru at the time. But then now, it never explained, the letter from State House never explained any, any privileges that would be, um, mm. uh, be given to these three who've been uh, appointed, who are allowed to sit in, in, in cabinet, including um, uh, Cleopas Malala. Would he enjoy any other privilege that a CS would because he's been sworn in now and he's sitting in, 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 uh, in cabinet and he'll be part of, cabin, uh, of, of the, the stings of cabinet. And then Gituko talked about the court case um, that had barred uh, General, Lieutenant General Mohamed Badi from, from sitting here. And it was taken to court. The petition was also was, was taken to court by Alice Wahome, who's the current water CS in this government. And at the time, she's the one who had gone to court complaining about why were they allowing a stranger into cabinet. Mm -hmm. At the time, um, the attorney general, the current attorney general was the speaker of the National Assembly, mm -hmm. uh, Justice Muturi. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's, it's a, it works when it's on the other side, but it doesn't work when it's on this, on this yeah. side, Yvonne. And that's, yeah. um, that's interesting. Yeah, Alinas, the president is entitled to having advisors who would, um, on whose wise counsel he would depend on um, to make decisions, um, you know, gender, economy, uh, amongst others. And there have been, you know, advisors in the past um, on political affairs, on agriculture and food security, and those we have seen. Um, what's the role they play? And are we making a fuss out of nothing about them being involved in the cabinet meetings? After all, I'm pretty sure um, part of the counsel that they would provide to the president would, would make its way into the cabinet proceedings, right? Right, and uh, I think this is still part of the ongoing transition into the final frame of what the Constitution of Kenya 2010 probably intended to achieve. Uh, because the one thing that uh, we are told is we borrow heavily from the American system of government. It is a presidential system, pure actually in its form. Uh, which then means that it's structured along lines where you have to empower the office of the, presidents, of, of the president in a, in, a, in a certain way. And what we see, um, when you compare, for example, what happens in the United States, you have um, cabinet-level appointments. You have cabinet appointments and cabinet-level appointments. Yeah. There are those officials, for example, the ambassador to uh, the United Nations is actually regarded as uh, uh, cabinet level appointment mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the US. Yeah. And these are the people who will say that so, so are some of the advisors like the National Security Advisors and is a cabinet level app appointment. So what we are seeing here is possibly uh, an attempt to mirror uh, uh, that kind of, of, um, of, of structure. Uh, but again, there are many questions as to what we intend uh, to achieve. From the last Jubilee administration, uh, before uh, it turned to uh, UDA now, uh, we had Rafael Tuju sitting in cabinet. And Rafael Tuju was the secretary general of the, of, of the party, uh, Jubilee, as Malala is uh, mm. yes. for, for UDA. For UDA yeah. 
And remember, this was not a secret. There was, a, I think, a, a, a tour to just familiarize with the Communist Party of China and how it conducts mm. it, it, its affairs. Mm -hmm. The Jubilee was very excitedly going for, and uh, we want a structure that works mm. that way. And it was after that that we now saw uh, the inclusion of Rafael Tuju into, into, into cabinet. Uh, what UDA is doing is exactly what uh, the Jubilee administration uh, did. And then let's go to the essence of why they have to uh, uh, take that oath. It's one of our old, oldest uh, laws that then you know, tries to order mm. people who get these high level appointments to a certain way of doing things, to a certain level of secrecy, confidentiality, not everything that goes out, uh, uh, happens in the cabinet should come yep. out, out here. And, and, and you know, I, I get tempted to go to the history of, of the cabinet itself and how the, even the name came. Um, it, it started in the UK, uh, I think it was in the 16th century, uh, when they spoke of um, uh, cabinet council, advice that is mm. given in a closed room, a mm -hmm. cabinet. It, it's a closed room, mm -hmm. uh, 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 so some level of high level of secrecy yeah. uh, was supposed to be to be observed. Uh, but but, I, but again, again, uh, you remember we inherited the British system first before we wrote the Constitution of Kenya tw 2010, where a cabinet was a very very clear space mm. in terms of who sits there. Cabinet in the until 2010 was a space of equals, and the boss will be the first among equals. Mm. That is not the case these days, uh, because uh, cabinet secretaries are no longer elected, so they yeah. don't really have yeah. any political uh -huh. uh, uh, leverage. They don't, they're not politically mm. uh, powerful. Some of them uh, rely entirely uh, for their future and survival on or that single appointment, appointment of, of, of the president. Yeah. Now, now, the UK system is, is more of a first among equals uh, system where the prime minister is not, is just a senior uh, a colleague. But now we are in a pure presidential system and president is boss. And if president wants more advice than he thinks that yeah. you can give, yeah. then he'll have a, a, a national security advisor sitting, sitting here, him, yeah. somebody else sitting yeah. here, and they are given those cabinet level appointments. Again, it's a, it, it, it's a, is an issue of the systems that we chose. Um, help us understand, uh, because one of the questions I have is about, uh, and just the same as Rafael Tuju, who was Secretary General of the party sitting in cabinet. Uh, now we have you know, a similar scenario. But the role of, of party politics, and of course, you know, it's, we have to understand the president comes from a political party, that political party has a manifesto, and that is what then drives um, you know, his agenda, his vision um, for the country. But where then is the role of the majority leader? Because I thought the majority leader then becomes the liaison between the party, the legislature, and the executive, yes. particularly cabinet. But then now when you have an added, um, you know, political, purely political figure uh, in cabinet, you know, what happens there? Pure and simple. This is senseless layering of positions. Uh, don't tell me now Cleopas Malala becomes the bearer of the vision of the government, the, the UD administration. Not really. I mean, if the minister, is an appointee of the of the president. It doesn't come from a, a different party. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah. the policy yeah. Yeah. It, it flows from the boss to uh, to the to the mini, to the ministers. So what is that that uh, a party secretary general is supposed to do in cabinet that head of public service, for example, is not supposed to, supposed to do? Uh, and when you look at the executive order number one uh, of twenty uh, twenty. Two, I think. 23. Well, 23, sorry. Well, when the president was ordering uh, his government. Look at how he separated the roles yeah. of what his deputy president will do, mm -hmm. what his the prime, uh, cabinet, prime secretary. cabinet secretary yeah. uh, will do. This is just, um, uh, it doesn't have a lot of meaning, if, if I can put it that way. Uh, don't look for too much meaning out of it, because this is not, this is not the communist party of China at all, mm. because the Secretary General of the Communist Party of China is uh, actually, the, the General Secretary is actually the, the, the becomes the, 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 the president. President, yeah. Uh, it, it's a very, very powerful, powerful mm. posi position. So uh, the comparisons are almost laughable. 
because this is duplicity of roles. Um, uh, I, I don't see Malala performing a duty that will be different from what <coughs> Musalia Mudavadi, Rigade Gashagwa, who are below the presidents, are, are, are going to perform in terms of driving the, the, the work of the ministries, the work of the uh, cabinet secretaries. And aligning that to and the aligning, party manifesto. Aligning right? that to the, to the party manifesto. Which the majority manifesto. leader can do. There's a chief whip also who then, you know, they take instructions from the party leader yeah. and the deputy party leader yeah. who, um, you know, president and his deputy who sit there. And then, you know, there's honor transmission to the majority leader, which is this is the agenda we want, the legislative agenda. This is how you drive it. And then, you know, the whip of the party then aligns the party members in terms of, um, you know, voting for that. And by the way, the majority leader and the chief whip are also members of UDA. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what one would imagine. So therefore, um, the, the interests of the party are certainly already well taken, taken care absolutely. of um, yeah. by these individuals. But, you know. You and of course, if so. you had to recall in um, 2018, um, there's a story we did, and Rafael Tuju, who spoke to Citizen TV mm. very often, was saying that uh, his role in cabinet at that time was to help the ministers um, align their works or their plans, the manifesto, the manifesto of the yeah. Jubilee Party. But uh, there's something in that, that really triggers my mind, because going into the election, who was the Secretary General of UDA? <laughs> it, it was, was Malala. Veronica Mayne. It was Veronica Mayne. Yes. Today she's the nominated senator. Right. Yeah. Mm. That time I think Lofas Malala was secretary. He was, he was a different running, party. He was a different party. ANC. Yeah. Yes. ANC. ANC. I think he was secretary general. I could be wrong, but I think that he was an official there. And therefore, obviously, Veronica Mayne could not sit in cabinet because she's also a state officer, knowing that she's a senator now. So does it mean that the change of a secretary general within the UDA party was something that was already thought out, the possibility of the secretary general um, attending cabinet meetings? But also what else provokes my mind is today you know who the cabinet secretary for say public service, affirmative action agenda affairs is, that is Aisha Juma. I'm just wondering if you have Harry Chigai as the presidential advisor on women affairs also yeah. sitting in cabinet. So who is the president going to listen to when, when he wants to hear about efforts to make sure that um, women affairs either are mainstreamed or there is improvement or there are policies to work on that. So who do you listen to? You have a cabinet secretary who has two principal secretaries. One is re responsible for public service and that is um, one Amos Gadesha. But you also have Veronica Nduva, the PS in charge of gender and affirmative action. So already Aisha Juma is advised by the PS and the many staff that work under her, they are there to ensure that uh, she succeeds in her job. Mm. And as she goes to cabinet, she's going to brief on the progress that uh, her ministry is making. Then you have a national, I mean, an advisor here of the president on the same matters. So who do you listen to? If it's about economic matters, you have the cabinet secretary, Professor uh, Njugun Ndongo, sitting there in cabinet, but you also have Devin D. So who should the president listen to on what exactly should be done to improve the economy of the country? If you have the cabinet secretaries for defense, Aden Duale, you have the uh, cabinet secretary of interior affairs, that is Professor Kithire Kindiki, they both also sit in the National Security Council. Yeah. So does the attorney general, so does uh, the minister for foreign affairs, Alfred Mutua, and the deputy president and the, the president, president and also hear about uh, the prime cabinet secretary also uh, yeah. being co-opted in the national security council so when you're hearing from monica juma up to what extent so if they are to make contributions to what extent and and, yeah. and i found that interesting as, as we finish yeah. um as we wrap up that in 2018 when president uh Uhuru kenyatta unveiled his second term uh, cabinet they had uh, nine 12 who had been retained mm -hmm. and there were nine new ministerial hopefuls who of course vetted by parliament yeah. and then now approved once they were approved they were they were sworn in as cabinet secretaries and at the time Rafael Tuju was not was among not. those yeah. mm -hmm. and at that time National Assembly Speaker who is now the AG Justin Muturi said that the Jubilee Secretary General was going to appear at cabinet meetings on invitation to address specific issues and at such Tuju would not have a ministerial office, neither the trappings of power that comes with it. I ask you, did he not have the trappings of power that came with being a CS at the time? But if you look at the situation right now is, and I think you've asked that question and I'm going to ask it again, having the UDA Secretary General in cabinet would add 
what value mm -hmm. that was already not there mm -hmm. with having your full cabinet there right. sworn in and has been working for almost a year. Yeah. What are the gaps that may have been there that led to um, mm -hmm. the addition the of addition. the three or four, and including a Clippers Manana, who's coming there purely as a politician mm. and as a representative mm. and as a secretary general of UDA, which is a political party. Mm. Leave alone the advisors that, that yeah. uh, who have also been sworn, yeah. uh, given the oath. Sworn yeah, in, yeah important questions yeah. Uh, as we go forward, but they've taken that oath of secrecy um, to whatever proceedings that they will be party to in cabinet meetings going forward. Here is something that is not secret. Our lives are about to change in a big way. Um, the Finance Act that was passed in Parliament